Hey, Mario. Um, Good morning, Anya. Would you mind giving a little introduction to the POW family tuning in here? For sure. What's up, POW folks? Uh, I'm Mario Molina. I'm the executive director of Protect Our Winters uh, since November of 2017. Awesome. Thank you. And um, you already know we had a bunch of POW community uh, write in from social media asking some questions on what it's like to be the executive director for POW. Um, so let's kick off with just a great intro one of um, how did you get into a career of climate change and the outdoors? Wow. How far back do we want to go? Let's keep it. I'll, I'll give you the short version. Uh, I started I started out in the outdoors back in Guatemala. I'm originally from Guatemala and I ran a small guide and outdoor shop. We did mountain bike trips, we did rock climbing trips, some some whitewater rafting, a lot of volcano expeditions. But I had a background in ecology. I think that's what I got my undergraduate degree in. So I've always kind of straddled both worlds. Um, and then it was really in the early 2000s after I finished my master's degree uh, at Appalachian State in, uh, in geosystems analysis that I started noticing no matter where I went in the world, whether it was Australia, coral bleaching or Ecuador, glacial recession, uh, that no matter where I went, the number one problem that seemed to be assuaging the landscapes that I loved and loved to recreate in was, uh, was global warming. So I became really, really interested in the topic uh, in 2009, 2000, yeah, 2009, um, when here in the US, uh, there was a bill in front of Congress called the Waxman Markey Bill, also known as the Cap and Trade Bill, which everybody thought for sure was going to pass, uh, and it didn't pass. So that made me really curious as to what was it about the politics in the U.S. that kept something that made so much sense from actually becoming law uh, and get really involved in both not only the science, but now also the policy and what aspects of advocacy were necessary to change the political will in order to pass legislation that makes sense and uh, that is absolutely necessary to move this, move this topic forward and, uh, and avoid the worst of the climate crisis. Yeah, and knowing that you hail from Guatemala, a lot of people in the POW community wanted to know how many languages do you speak? <laughs> Uh, I'm fluent in three, English, German, and Spanish, and I can get by in Portuguese and a little bit of French. I think you're topping most of the POW team on languages. <laughs> yeah. um, well, a lot of the POW community also wanted to know, um, obviously we work a lot in DC. We head to the Hill every year to do our lobby days. Um, when you head out with the POW team to do that, what kinds of questions are you asking politicians? So it really depends. It depends on whether it's uh, elected officials who we believe are trying their best to actually move the conversation forward uh, and pass legislation or propose legislation that will help us move this, uh, the, move the topic. So, for example, if there, you know, last year we talked about tax extenders for renewable energies, solar credits, uh, wind, the the production tax credit for wind, the investment tax credit for solar, an extension on the the tax credit for storage, which applies to both utility storage as well as electric vehicles. So there's a lot of uh, technical questions that we can ask uh, in terms of how can we help? Where, where can the voice of the outdoor sports community actually be helpful in moving this forward? Uh, and when, there's, when we encounter elected officials who are not moving this forward, even blocking it, I think the question really becomes why? Um, and ultimately the, ultimately the question that I, that, that I would like to get straight answers from them is um, at some point, either your children or your grandchildren are going to look you in the eye and they're going to ask, did you do everything that you could when we knew how dire the situation was? And they have to be ready with that answer. They have to be able to answer that. And if they're not, the weight of history is going to weigh down on them. Uh, 
so there's obviously there's the there's the technical line of questioning, and then things that we can ask and problems that need to get solved that we can find you know, bipartisan solutions for. Uh, but there's also the overarching moral question as to are we doing everything that we can as fast as we can? Yeah, um, and, and going off of that, I know that the PAL community is really curious, um, based on those answers, what does success look like for PAL and in climate action through 2020? Mm. Yeah, that's a, that is a rapidly evolving question. So you know, in, in current times and uh, uh, in, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, we have obviously all been faced with a much more urgent priority, uh, if not equally important priority. And that is how do we all stay safe and healthy, flatten the curve, help, uh, help our community maintain social distancing, uh, and figure out what, how are we going to you know, make sure that our economies are resilient and, and get back on their feet. So for PAL, you know, our priority is how do we support all of the responsible social actions that we need to be taking on and encouraging right now, while also reminding everyone in our community that we have this other massive crisis that we need to address rapidly uh, and with urgency, in, particularly in an election year like 2020. So for us, success will really look like weathering, weathering the storm that we're going through right now, uh, collectively with our community, uh, while also reminding and being able to keep uh, climate change top of mind come the election and making sure that we are all getting out to vote come November um, and that we are all speaking with a very loud voice that we care about, we care about the economy, but we also care about the long-term sustainability, not only of our economic systems, but also of our playgrounds. Uh, the places that many of us have been going to during this time to find a little bit of solace and some recreation and some joy, um, you know, whether it's in our uh, immediate backyard or you know, anywhere that we're allowed to go and we should be going responsibly. Um, but those are the places that, we, that we're trying to protect. And those are the places that I think in times like this shows how important it is to make them a priority because they offer, they, they offer a respite and they offer us an escape from what can be, what, what can sometimes seem like overwhelming situations in the world. Yeah, and knowing that that is, is going on, a lot of people wanted to know what are the ways that they can stay involved with us right now. Yeah, well, uh, right now, as, um, as most responsible brands, businesses, and partners have done, we have moved all of our operations to digital. Uh, we're not holding any events. We're not holding any, uh, any in-person gatherings. But we are still very active on social. And there's a few things that people can really do to help us out. And it's to help us spread the word. So spread the content that Powell puts out. We're you know, on social, comment on social, share it with friends, uh, recruit people in, in your own network to follow us, help them learn, uh, help share the resources that we have online with, uh, with your friends on social media and through, the, and through other, uh, digital. Uh, and also keep an eye out. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do a big event, a digital event on, uh, on Earth Day. And we'll be revealing uh, our campaign, a new campaign, and we'll be bringing in a lot of our athletes. And uh, we'll be talking about science, policy, activism, and doing it in a, in a fun, pow way. So keep an eye out and uh, stay in touch with us on social and tell your friends, all, tell your friends about Pow. Um, I know some people in the Pow community have been wondering, um, you're talking about partnerships and, and people getting involved with us for Earth Day. When, when Pow is making partnership decisions and people want to get involved with us, like what, what kinds of things are we looking for? Yeah, uh, I get really excited. I, I get really excited when we talk about our partners as much as I do when we talk about our athletes and our other alliances, uh, because our partners that... Uh, the partners that we work with are brands or organizations or businesses that have a deep shared value uh, proposition with Protect Our Winter. So it's, we partner with brands who care about the environment. We partner with brands who realize that it's incredibly important for civic action to be a critical component of climate action. 
we partner with brands who are looking at their own sustainability and their own uh, and their own ways to in, own ways to improve, but who realize at the same time that what we really need is the voice of business driving for large scale systemic policy shifts, uh, so that we can turn the ship around far more quickly than uh, than we can without the voice of business. So it's it, they're broad ranging. They range from institute financial institutions. To, uh, to gear manufacturers, to ski resorts, uh, to service providers. And ultimately what we are looking for is brands that really believe in the mission of PAL and who are, uh, who are willing to support and get behind it. We've got fantastic partnerships with a lot of the leading brands in, this, uh, in the industry. So Burton, North Face, Patagonia, um, and then you know a lot of uh, you know strong partnerships with resorts, individual resorts, as well as uh, companies such as Altera, an Aspen ski company, uh, and then some product manufacturers out, outside of uh, outside of strictly outdoors, like Skull Candy or Sierra uh, Sierra Nevada or New Belgium Brewing Company. So these are all brands with whom we stand side by side and fully believe in their business ethos, and are really proud to have them in the power network. Yeah, and it's a big community um, when you wrap all of those partnerships in with the, the individuals and the alliance members who are, who are a part of POW. Um, I think the final most hard-hitting question that a lot of people wanted to know is just simply, what's the toughest part about being the executive director at POW? Uh, well, I'll say the, the toughest part is constantly navigating a shifting landscape. You know, we, you know, I think in outdoors, a lot of times, you know, we are used to being able to plan a year, year and a half ahead. Uh, and, you know, times like this, throw a, uh, throw a wrench into, into the works in terms of that, that kind of strategic planning timeline. For us is we do our best to plan ahead, you know, a year in advance, but in terms of the climate landscape, things are constantly shifting, whether it be policies and legislation that's passing, uh, whether it be elections, uh, or whether it be climate disasters that require you know, require new attention or emerging science. So making sure, doing my best to try and uh, integrate so that we're delivering a value proposition to our community that is informed, uh, genuine, as well as science-based and fact-based, and fact -based, that takes into consideration how do we filter all of this information and decide what's the most important information that we need uh, to engage the community on and uh, and what is it that they can do that can have that can have real impact but with, as with any challenge there's also a lot of there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of positives and i you know i say this every time you know the the joy of working at pow is the people that we work with at pow ranging from yourself anya and the rest of our team at headquarters but all the way through to our alliance members, our volunteers, our community members online, it's, it's just one of the most uh, rewarding communities to be engaged with and be a part and be a part of. That's amazing news for the BOW community too. Well, I just want to give a huge thank you to everybody who participated and asked yeah. questions. And thank you, Mario, for just creating more transparency and getting people into the POW community. Um, just want to let everyone know we'll have a few more of these coming out in the next couple of weeks. So keep your eyes out and let us know if you have more questions. Yeah, stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and uh, always join us and belong to the solution. Thank you, Mario. Good to see you, Anya.